Hello, welcome back to actual play. Uh, apologies at the very end of the last segment, my connection dropped and weird things happen when that happens. Phantoms, specters, I don't know what you see, what you hear, but anywho, uh, we all took a little file break and uh, we're back now uh, and ready to dive into some swords and sandals and sorcery adventures. All right. Over player, you want to drop us in a phase? Yeah. All right. So let's let's just do this. Let's jump in. Uh, uh, the first phase here is going to be a rogue's phase. I'm going to roll the dice to find our overtone. Oh. Oh. What happened? Wow. Um, yeah. Well, if it's a tie. So the thing about an overplayer is that they never get a stymie and they never get a moral or a mystery because mm. I'm special. I wrote those rules. Yeah. Um, Lazy. So what happens is that whenever there's a tie, the overtone is the flip of what the previous overtone was. But if it's the first roll of the game, I just get to decide. Yeah. And I'm going to, based on off-camera discussions, I'm going to go with Jovial uh, because I heard that some people are have missed out on uh, Ren Fairs, uh, and I'm going to use. Uh, Elderflower Honey as my Eidolon for this, this adventure here. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to set us uh, at a fair. Um, we didn't really discuss the kind of uh, sort of sorcery world that we're inhabiting here. I don't know why I did that when I talked about a world. But um, uh, so I don't, I don't want to come out and say it's a Ren fair, like I don't want to say necessarily it's the Renaissance or anything like that, but there's certainly a fair going on. There's certainly uh, lots of brightly colored tents uh, out on um, a field. There's lots of uh, music being played. Uh, people are um, enjoying uh, uh, treats of uh, elder flower honey slathered on bread uh, and uh, and I need to come up with a thunder here. I just I wanted to paint the most pleasant experience <laughs> possible and Absolutely. now I got to create some sort of ominous threat and I think uh, what is happening is um, oh come on this right we're not going to just start off with just everybody getting along and everything's happy. So what has happened- There was some party crasher, right? Yes. Uh, there, uh, the, okay, so uh, the thunder uh, is that this, oh, the this fair is, uh, like I said, it was out on a, you know, bright green field and everything like there's a forest nearby and and uh there's probably butterflies coming out of uh like the field with the wildflowers and everything like that but somewhere in the distance there is a very large tower just standing in the middle of nowhere heading up and the shadow of that tower just creeps ever closer to the fairgrounds Right as the day goes on, the shadow of the tower grows longer and longer. That's the thunder. Uh, I don't have to tell you what that means. Uh, but this is a uh, rogue's face, so I'm going to hand the dice to one of you. I'm going to give this to. Um, I'm going to go with Gleek here. So in a rogue's face, I started off by I, I make a demand, uh, and the demand is. Um, Show us how you're entertaining the fair goers. So the first thing you do is you roll the dice. So you just uh, do that thing where you click yeah, on it. Yeah, just walk me through it. So the dice, there so you they are. Right click on them. Uh -huh. And then random side, right? Yep. There you go. So Ooh, glum. you're glum. So you just hit that tone. It doesn't like, again, it doesn't have to be sad. It's just something that could be either quiet or cool or uh, um, darker, or uh, it could be more morose or just more reserved. Uh, and- I think Gleek is a pretty yeah. gregarious person. 
person. I think that she really likes to chat and get to know uh, people, animals, in, you know, whatever happens to be nearby. But for whatever reason, she's keeping to herself today. And mostly she's rummaging through the plates and bones and scraps that people have been leaving behind and just quietly scavenging on them and not really making eye contact with anybody, just having herself a little snack. Nice. So, uh, and so the the question, the demand that I made was like, show us how you're entertaining the people. Oh, entertaining and the club it's, thing. Yeah. But it's perfectly fine if that's like, oh. if you're just like, people are being entertained yeah, by that. No, no, no. I think what's happening is a lot of the village children are starting to follow her around and starting to whisper and point and kind of laugh at her. Right. Um, yeah. Doing her best to ignore them, but it's starting to draw a bit of a crowd. Excellent. All right. So we're in a rogue phase, which means anyone can end it whenever they want. Uh, I personally don't feel like we should end it right now. Uh, I think everyone should have a shot at this rogue phase. Uh, so if we're not ending it, then uh, Gian, you get to make a demand of someone else's character, which again, it just it's you start off with the phrase "show us yeah. how you do this" or "show us how you do that." Yeah, I'm going to pass it to Laqueen um, and let me look at the sheet one more time. Uh, Laqueen, show us um, what gear or weapons you've brought with you to this fair and why you think you need them to be prepared. Pass those dice right there. How do I pass the dice? Do I just move them? Yeah, you just, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Got it. Cool. All right, so I roll first and then. Yeah. Almost always you roll first in this game. Oh, look okay. at that. <laughs> so this is a mystery. Uh, so uh, this, this is going to be a fun one to interpret, too. So by the rules, as a mystery, you're unable to show us that. And the reason you're unable is either something supernatural or unknown or mysterious. So if you got an idea, go for it. Oh, and everything is glum now because the overtone was jovial. So it's flipped to glum. Ah, I'll update the overtone. Yeah. And if you, if that's an escalation of some sort. Am I, is, is my rogue possibly clued in on why, like this is also a mystery to them explicitly, right? Right, but it, like you get to decide what part of it is a mystery, right? Like you can be clued into a chunk of it and be like, I, I, it's just this part here that I don't understand. Cause you have to write the, the question that is the mystery to your rogue. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Looking um, to the average passerby uh, is just a walking, billowing cloak. Uh, they're, they're a silhouette um, of a stark, almost like marble white that flutters in the wind. And under that undulating shape normally would be the display of seven blades, seven small knives. Today, um, she notices this shadow in the distance bifurcating the field away from this, uh, this whole festival. But um, where she would normally grip one of the blades for comfort, she finds none. Instead, she looks through the crowd and sees them holding the Chris daggers that she usually carries. And she wonders how they got them. Nice, yeah. So go ahead and write that mystery on the, uh, I'm pointing to my screen as if that's helpful. Sorry, right over there. <laughs> uh, um, under the mysteries there in, in uh, like a question about that. Um, yeah. How did they come upon the queen's daggers, curse daggers? How 
for sure. Let me, if you can't modify the field, I think I think it should be good now. But okay, nice. excellent. Yes. So. Uh, Again, anybody can ask for the end of this phase, but again, I think it's probably good if we keep going. If you want to make a demand of someone else, uh, you just hand and, the dice to them and say, and we make us. demands of you over player? Oh yeah, that is a, a, something you can do. You can hand the dice to me and say, show us and, I, and ask me something about one of the non-rogue characters or about the world itself. And I will have to answer that. Um, Cool. Uh, so I think Kovar, show us what haunts you about this land, not the festival itself, and how you cope with it. <laughs> All right, let me roll them. Yeah. Let's see what we get. <laughs> okay, it's the same spiel. Uh, you, uh, awesome. This is going to be an interesting interpretation, but it, you're unable to. Uh, some part of that you're unable to do. Uh, it might be you're unable to show us. It might be you're unable to be haunted by this land for some mysterious reason. Uh, however, mm -hmm. you want to interpret that. Uh, being and the word jovial. Oh yeah, and we're all jovial now. Yeah. <laughs> So does that include my answer? Like, is my is the is my mystery jovial, or do I stick yeah. with glow? Oh, you yeah. do, no, you 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 are now jovial. So you want to hit the jovial tone? Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so I'm. Yeah. Okay. Let me think about it. So I'm unable to show why this the land itself haunts me, mm -hmm. um, and I think. Is it possible that it's not haunting you just at this particular moment in this festival? Like that it normally... Yes. I think um I think I've been hearing dogs barking um for several days, uh, but I've not actually seen a dog. Um uh, but since we've come to the festival, I haven't heard or or seen, I've continued to not see, and I have not heard dogs barking since we got here. Oh. Um so yeah, that's the that's the mystery. Um, Where did the dogs go? <laughs> <laughs> Who let them go? Maybe. Who let oh, them no, go? No, <laughs> oh no! No, <laughs> no! Sorry, I'm sorry. I can't do this. Uh, yeah, so you get to write a mystery about that. That's good. Oh, I like these dogs. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to pass the dice over to uh, Tidefala. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm going to ask you to show us, um, show us how you're um, currying the locals' favor. How are you endearing yourself to the, these, these folk? I got it. Let's, let's roll these bones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, right. I swear so, these aren't fixed dice. So it's the glum. <laughs> yeah, we're okay. And all of these things seem to be escalations of some sort. And yeah. I should I should make sure that there's like oh no, actually I don't necessarily need to. It's only if you did a um unintended consequence do I have to step in. So yeah. So but I can I can see these escalating in different so, ways. Everyone's um, going, what's happening? <laughs> you want to know how I curry the favor of the locals oh. and, and uh, I have to tell you how I fail to do that. Um, in this beautiful uh, uh, meadow uh, that, that looks like it's out of a storybook, there's also a lake mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, Tidefala is engaging in a jovial game or it was a jovial game until someone sabotaged it. Uh, <laughs> a jovial game of Rambo 
where we are canoeing about and smacking into each other. It's like bumper cars, but with boats. And we're all trying to, to um, and, and Tidefalla is the, uh, Tidefalla is um, ca bring, calling on all challengers uh, to try and flip her boat over. Uh, and, and she is, was having a rollicking good time um, until, uh, until uh, she pushed one of the boats and I, I uh, oh, we don't know, I don't know why this happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. One of the boats has suddenly become beached on something in the lake. And there is a child on the boat who is now looking in panic and terror uh, as they uh, as they are stuck on this boat and they can they're paddling and not able to move, and uh, as Tidefalla kind of looks up to the parents um, of these children, um, they look their their faces go from uh, elation of like oh you're playing this game with our kids to like what have you done to my child yes and uh, and Tidefalla turns and she has like this penetrating dark look. And it seems like it's at the child, but it's actually at the water below. So what traps the child? Hold on. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to end that phase there because I know what I'm going to do next. Uh, it may be, may be another rogues phase though. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what, what we're going to get for. Okay. Um, I actually would like to highlight another motif, possibly. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. At any time, go ahead and write those down. What, what, were, you, what were you? Um, gazing at whatever swims yeah. beneath the waves. They're like beneath the water. Yeah, thank you. Now we're on. OK. This is what it's a rogues phase again. I apologize. That's fine though. We can keep doing this. Um, right. So I start the phase off. I tell you who's there, what condition you're in, and uh, uh, what's happening. You all are there. Uh, so are all like many of these people that were at this fair. Uh, you're all at the uh, further down the field. We haven't moved very far in time or space, but you are now closer to the tower. And you are all bound. The uh, the 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 you have been uh, set upon by the fair goers, and they have tied you up, and they've brought you before uh, the sorceress in the tower. And uh, so above you is this this tower of oh, I got it. Um, what am I? What did I? I'm jovial. All right, so. I said the tower had a shadow, yep. which is true, but also the tower uh, casts like a, uh, like a prism, casts like a, a whole spectrum of light uh, off in another direction. So like the sunlight comes through and it casts a shadow in one direction and the specter of light in another direction. It's this giant crystalline tower. And uh, at the top of it, uh, you can't see the sorceress at the top of it, but her voice bellows out. And the, um, I got, I, I have to give you a thunder, which is a distant threat. And I really have very immediate threats here. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, in the, in this crystalline tower now from, from where you are, again, you're, you're closer to it, but you're not like right at the foot of it. You can see at the top of it, something almost like like a, a, a something winding through a vein like structure or some sort of coming down the the inside the tower itself because like the tower is crystalline and you can't quite make out what it is but that is definitely the thunder uh, and the the sorceress you know who dares disturb me all the usual stuff that that they do uh, and um, the the townsfolk are accusing you of uh, awakening the beast in the lake, right? Like that's obviously that's the the problem here. Um, 
I am assuming, and I might be wrong on this, I'm assuming that you all arrived together. If that is not correct, please correct me on that. Uh, I that mean, works for me. That was, yeah, that was my yeah, assumption. That was okay. my assumption yeah, well. too. Okay, yeah. So, that, like, obviously, uh, Tide Fella is, is the one being accused, but you're co-conspirators, clearly. Right, that's, Tide that's Fella is, like, I'm... looking to Glee and be like, I don't know why they get so upset about you eating their trash. I mean, I think this is an overreaction. <laughs> yeah. I think... I think, I think this is... A... They would have kept it, but no one put a label on these bones. They're my bones. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that's the rule of bones. If no one ta- holds them. My own zone, and I don't know why they're trying to, anyway. Yep. Clearly, this isn't about me. I mean, I, I guess it could be about the monster in the lake and the child and whatever I'm out of seven fourth, but I, I think that they were giving you eyes about those bones. They so really just, were. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't get it. Uh, all right, so I'm going to make a demand. So there's definitely uh, bigger ones from, you know, bigger of uh, the fair goers. Oh, yeah, because they have like, a, it's a fair. They have like a, a strong man and a, a, you know, like holding you. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, there's one. Uh, so they're, yeah, they're, they're demanding that uh, the sorceress. Um, uh, but they're just making those accusations to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the dice to one of you. Who is least equipped to do this? Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that. But I'm going to hand the them to Kovar. Queen doesn't have her daggers right now. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> just to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Lokin, show us. Show us how you manage to. Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, I'm not even going that far. Show us how you managed to free Kovar. Ooh. And we're are we all bound or just Kovar? Uh, no, all 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 four of you have like uh are bound and being held together in front of this crowd. Like I'm in my head. Unfortunately, I'm seeing The Simpsons. You know, like uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to like <laughs> dial it back and have like a maybe I should go more Monty Python. <laughs> like crowd but like these I, I mean these people are dressed in motley and, and whatnot and uh yeah maybe there's even even some sort of uh fool uh who's who's stepped up to be your uh advocate i'm <laughs> sorry you go on with whatever you're doing there don't let's see um, yeah ah things uh, are jovial, jovial. Yes. So, um, I, <laughs> um, I look at my compatriots and then I turn toward Kovar, um, and I say to them, you must be the one to abate the tide. Me? <laughs> and 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 I get the crowd really riled up about this prospect. Mm. <laughs> and they free you in order to and, and yes. kind of escort you to the the, <laughs> the waters. And I'm and I'm rolling with this. I'm yeah. rolling with this. Like I'm mm. like, yes. Yes, I alone. <laughs> You're right. My time has come. Um, and Kovar is, Kovar is a big, dumb barbarian, like thighs out, hair bad, <laughs> chin strong. You know what I mean? Um, and so, and I'm like, yes, it is. It is right. It is good. So. Um, what question, Javari, are you demanding that Kovar show us how they, how they, how <laughs> Right, they you get to us? make a demand now. I mean, yeah. you get to make a demand. Oh, yeah. So Ooh, I, I have a different demand. Go for uh, it, yeah. <laughs> Kovar, show us how you reveal what the true disturbance is. Oh, oh okay. Um, all right, let me roll. Yeah, good instinct. <laughs> all right, hi, Jovial. Ooh, yeah. It's just um, the party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um uh, so um 
I'm going to I'm going to look into the water. I'm going to like hands and knees like other like villagers approach the water and I'm like no no you must not and I'm I'm backing everybody up and I I I yeah I'm on my hands and knees I look down into the water I I place my hand into the water and lift it up and I pour it out people in the, people in the crowd flinch when I do this and I say and I say these waters, all these waters are displeased. Uh, in the, the festival that ends the rainy season is meant to honor all, all water. Um, and we displease it. We displease it with this conflict. We displease it with this fear. Uh, we displease it with our cowardice. Um, it, it wants um, merriment. The waters demand merriment. Um, and yeah, I'm basically going to command these villagers to party like the waters demand, um, your, your suspicion of each other, your willingness to turn on the, on the stranger, um, your willingness to, to cower and fear, um, the water finds this pathetic, the water respects, um, celebration and only that. So, uh, yeah, Kovar starts like shaking people by the, by the shoulders and like, and, and like talking to the guy with the loot and like, play you fool, that kind of thing, <laughs> um, to just get people to fucking party. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to pass the dice to Gleek, um, to say, uh, to ask Gleek, how do, how do we, um, get out of this? How, how do you, show us how, um, yeah, show us show us how we exit the situation. All right. Well, let's roll the dice and see yes. what happens. Taifala is like 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 putting her finger in her ear. She's like, that's what the water said. I, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, jovial. Okay. Jovial. Cool. Uh, so the townspeople don't get eaten alive by rats, which is like a plus. <laughs> um, you don't you don't have to use your glum. Your glove. No, but it's there, and it's so it's yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> like right there. And uh, actually, Epi, the way our feats work are, is that one time when we roll, we can just say nah. Instead, I do this thing. It's yeah. jovial, and this happens, yeah. right? So, so if, if you do want to eat the townsfolk with rats, you can, you can absolutely do that, that right now. Yeah, Seriously, even. Um, I'm sure the rats would be into it, but no, I think uh, <laughs> instead we'll save that for a special treat later. For now. Um, I think what we do is Gleek, who had been on the cusp of being like a figure of ridicule and maybe even like short term uh, persecution is now this like weird mascot for this party that Kovar has like instigated and set up. And she's like daring people to do people to like do weirder, grosser shit in these like little bracketed tournaments until finally, um, as a cool dare, right? Uh, I imagine that this beautiful idyllic meadow with the pastoral wildflowers, the birds singing overhead, maybe at this point, the sun is just starting to set. And there is like a midden heap. And that midden heap actually goes downhill. It's an area that isn't safe to go in. And that's why people just literally throw their trash off the side of this little uh, steep embankment. And um, Leek uh, dares people to put together toboggans, like little sleds out of the fair trash. Again, like, you know, scraps of cloaks, plates, like whatever. And they're all like laughing and putting them together. Now we have these perfect little toboggans to literally sail our way out on a sled of garbage to wherever the fuck the embankment ends, which I have no idea where it is, but it's not here. And that's the that's the idea nice. generally. So I'm gonna yeah. call it end of phase. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's a great way to end yeah. it. Is right. us riding out on the thing? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's right. Riding out on a trash toboggan. Yes. Right. Uh, I think Tavala, uh, Taipala has like a tiny bit of a barrel that's like been busted, and it's just like the little like little quarter of a barrel that's like some of the the the, the rim is sort of sticking out. It's, she's. <laughs> if this is modern day, like real life, this is very reminiscent of when me and my 
buddies would take like trash, like garbage bin lids and sled on them. Like, that's that's the vibe, except yeah. it's literally garbage, not snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, ah, I moved the whole sheet. I hope that didn't destroy everything. Uh, I didn't see anything. Oh, I thought I moved it. Oh, it might. I might have just moved it in my. Yeah, yeah. you can. You can arrow yeah. around. Uh, all right, Glum. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. The uh... so you've taken the trash toboggan out of town. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna uh, take us into the night and oh alright are we are we cool with going a little weird yeah yes. so oh. yeah I think um, it doesn't oh. stop right like the, so you're on the trash toboggan and it is now three, no, yeah. it's well into the night. I, I, I don't know if, if you uh, very capable rogues would have stayed on it, but at this point it's gone for like the sun has set and you're still going and you're just, and uh, it's gone, it, like the, um, the world around you has gotten darker and darker. You can see the the stars up ahead, uh, 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 up above. Um, but like, you know, maybe you had, had gone down this hill and into uh, something of a forest area and expected at any point to hit like a tree or even just rough ground or something, but it just doesn't. And it just quietly glides on and glides on and uh, the air just kind of gets, uh, or it's, it's, you know, you can feel the breeze and it's a nice cool breeze and then just uh, everything goes dark. I'm getting this like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, like falling forever feel like, ah! Yeah, yeah, there's, ah! <laughs> it is, it has reached the point where like, it, it, like it's more of, it has gone, out of the panic time and into the the moment of wonder before it goes into that moment of like doldrums <laughs> you know like you're still like uh i'm going to give you a thunder here though uh oh i think the thunder is is what's happening is that you just don't feel the ground underneath it anymore right like before Obviously, you were going across the ground and everything was all shaky, and now it's just, it even feels vaguely uh, weightless. Um, I'm going to do a discovery phase. No, actually, I'm going to do a perilous phase. So, what I'm going to do, I met, cutting back, I want to do a discovery phase. I'm going to do a discovery phase. So, I gave you the thunder. This is, um, let me go ahead and give this to Tide Fala here. Uh, so it's a discovery phase. You roll the dice right away. Uh oh. I was going to say, bad plan. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to sit on this and we're all going to, the horrible things are going to happen. All right, <laughs> glum. Cool. So you get to, again, reveal something about the world, either something you're right now discovering or you remember or you're telling. Uh, Oh, oh, we're in discovery. Sorry, I thought discovery. We were in yeah, yeah. Phase. Okay, not perilous. No. Yeah. Um, and okay. then you, you, then you'll ask me a, a leading question about this thing you've discovered. Okay. Um, so I think, um, I think we feel weightless. Um, I think we feel weightless and can't really tell the up from down anymore. But we're not alone. And at some point, tide fall up. Um, a um, an uh, an old uh, uh, a, a quill uh, lands on on Tidefalla's uh, broken toboggan, trash toboggan, 
And after that comes fluttering, crunched up bits of paper as from a manuscript uh, or, or something that was written and discarded um, by the sorceress. Um, and, and, and clearly discarded in, in disdain. And as Tidepala kind of like, oh, it's dark here, but somehow we can read, somehow we can see enough. So as Tidepala like unfurls this uh, parchment that has been discarded, uh, what does she learn of uh, the sorceress's uh, writings? Oh, <laughs> all right, you threw this back on me, thanks. Uh, so I'm supposed to do, right? Is that yeah, no, it is. It's absolutely yeah. some jerk and it's really wrote the old. rules that way. It's it's really old. Like I think the pet, the quill looks all burnt out, and it's clearly all of these things have clearly been thrown away. They've all been discarded. Well, I mean, I my impulse, and I, I'll just follow my impulse here, is that the this is a. Uh, uh the sorceress's diary right uh oh okay i yeah um i think it makes very little sense at first until you realize that it's written in code uh and the sorceress thinks she's being watched in her own tower and uh is is like it's her documenting the movements of something in her tower that she thinks might be reading her you know her journal and uh uh you know so it's it's yeah and she's expressing fear about this like she doesn't know what's unleashed in her tower she doesn't know what uh um uh, uh, yeah. Um, I think, I think Tyson is that, is that like uncodes this to some degree by being like, Gleek, pigeons don't march two by two, do they? That's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right? Like, uh, yeah, like it, it must be code for something. Uh, yeah, yeah, that answers my question. What, what, do I, what do I do now? Do I, do I hand just the hand the dice to someone else because I'm not ending this phase yet? Okay, awesome. Um, uh, Kova. Oh, no, no, nope. That's not what I wanted. Clicking <laughs> on the wrong thing. Uh oh, I have the power to absolutely wreck the, the stream. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the queen, tell us what you discover and ask yeah, the, the player a question yeah. based mm. off of it. Um, Ooh, okay, so roll first, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, um, the queen, um, looking around and seeing like the landscape change, um, and then hearing about this code and hearing this this panic that the sorceress has been uh, experiencing peripherally uh, starts to smile with mischief. Um, and in a conspiratorial fashion, just pulls her cloak over her eyes and gazes deep into the shadow that's cast, just blocking out the rest of the world as we are moving along um and she watches until the darkness swims with an image of what she has unleashed in the sorcerer's in the sorceress's tower what is that <laughs> okay Excellent. Uh, so this is something that Le Queen has unleashed. Le Queen has un unleashed in the tower. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, and
And she starts to laugh, by the yeah. way. She's <laughs> okay. She's like <laughs> it's not at all chilling. Um yeah, I think I I uh yeah, I'm trying to think what exactly. So I think it's this thing that we saw kind of coiling down inside the, the tower before. So I think it's a, um, I'm still glum. The overtone for me is still glum. So I think it's a, a, it's some sort of serpent made of smoke, right? Like a, 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 yeah. Like a billowing worm. Yeah, yeah. That like can get into crevices and hide and, and move to places. Uh, and um, but I think specifically because uh, you unleashed it. I think it's uh, is it. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily uh, under your control. It's just something you knew that would be. Uh, oh, absolutely the, not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's something that you knew would be uh, um, meddlesome in the sorceress's affairs. Yeah, it's sort of like, uh, you know, if you, if you threw a. Um, if you threw a badger in your neighbor's home, right? Like <laughs> you, you're not in control of the badger there, but uh, but it, it definitely is like a sentient thing. It is like a, a, a spirit of some sort. Um, yeah, I actually don't know anything about your power. So this is interesting, but if, if you disagree with any of that, that's fine. But uh, no. does, that, does that answer um, your question? It does. Uh, I After I finish cackling mysteriously, uh, at the tail end of this um, ethereal trash toboggan, yeah. <laughs> um, I um, I simply just say, um, I know what clouds the sorceress's sight, and look how it's revealed her secrets. And I simply start like bending over and like plucking up different aspects of this journal and tucking oh. them away. Um, but while I while I do this, um, at this point, I I I would offer the dice and ask for a different. So, no, you board. don't have to. It says in a discovery phase, I decide whether I want to end the phase now, or uh, if I don't, then you do just hand the dice. You don't have to make any demand or anything. Um, I I want to give everyone a chance to do part of the discovery here, so uh, I'm not going to end it now. So go ahead and hand it. To someone else. Uh, oh wait, so I'm gonna hand it to Gleek. Sorry, I'm imagining when you tuck the like the torn bits of paper in uh, your cloak that they stick out at jagged edges like the hilts of your daggers would have if mm. if if mm. you had if you had your daggers on you. Oh yes. Been stolen. Uh so yeah roll the dice first. Yeah. Okay, Glum wins the day this time. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna just reiterate because uh, I said this when I talked about this a long time ago. But you, when you make a discovery in the discovery phase, it does not have to do. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to bend over backwards to try and tie it into the story. So if you just want to discover something uh, unrelated, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, Um, so, gosh, it's on me, huh? Um, I mean, I think we're in like the trash heap of the underworld right now. It yeah, feels yeah. like, I mean, this is like gotta be Gleek's, like, <laughs> like, this is like your domain. I was gonna say, I feel very at home here. Um, so with discovery it's about like exploring the place that we're in and like finding something it could be like a memory that you had to it, you could be just relating a story or some knowledge that you have as well it doesn't have to necessarily be a discovery of the place that you're in but 
Yeah, it, it, I think Gleek does have a childhood memory, and it's maybe not what you would expect. It's when she was very small in a cottage with whoever, like, let's say a grandfather. Um, and it's tidy. Everything is spotless. Uh, and there's a roaring fire in the hearth. And the memory is of being um, on her grandfather's lap and being, like, cradled from behind as she's looking into the fire. And she says, you know, grandfather, will you tell me the story again? And he starts telling her the story of the underworld. And he starts telling her all the ways that you can look for signs that there's the hinge between worlds and it's been left just a little open. Maybe it's that um, you're walking uh, as you're foraging and you can hear things you're not supposed to hear like just behind you. Maybe it's that you stumble into a meadow and you find a fairy ring of mushrooms. Maybe it's that you keep walking and walking and walking and you know the path and yet you still aren't getting to where you know you're, you're supposed to go. And that's when you need to be careful. Otherwise you'll go to the underworld. And sometimes when you go, you don't come back. And that's the, the memory that she has. Uh, and then imagine everything just kind of focusing back into the present day as Gleek is rather casually just strolling around thinking about <laughs> this story. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that is the... Oh, and you uh, asked me a leading question about that. And that um, leading question is, um, what part of the story was my grandfather not telling me? Oh! Ooh. That's really dark where I am. Give me one second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it matched the mood. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's just glum. the underworld, no big deal. I was going to say glum. No, no yeah. worries. Uh, oh, and I'm glum too. Um, oh, oh, um, sorry. I got super excited by my own idea, which is, I apologize. Please uh, be excited about this, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so your grandfather didn't tell you uh, about how you get attached to the underworld uh, through your, the, your loved ones that are in the underworld because he didn't want to put in your head that your loved ones were in the underworld, right? Didn't want you going there seeking them because he knew you could get attached to them uh, when, when you visit them there, when you, when you run into them there. Uh, does that work? Is that a good answer to your? Absolutely. <laughs> That's so good. I All right. It. Love it. And uh, now, did I say it to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to, I haven't heard from Kovar yet. And I yeah. Would love to if they're ready. Um, so Kovar was tormented for days by the sounds of dogs barking. Yes. Um, and here in the underworld, that has um, been replaced by the sound of a single dog howling, um, but one continuous howl such that no earthly dog could ever make. Nice. Um, did you, I'm sorry, did you roll? I, I... Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm really, I'm loving so where this ready. is going. I'm but so... like, it's oh, perfect, it's, perfect. It's, it's jovial, which is, which is delightful. Um, you and can make so, it glum if you want by using your feet. You can break the delicate silver chain around your wrist and force break, it to be glum. Break the de delicate silver chain around my wrist. I mean, um, that's how you that's how you use your feet. If you want this to be a glum note, it's your it's your, um, it's your choice. Yes, I, mean, I, I I thought the the howling fit jovial just as well. I mean, that's mm. loud in some way as well. So, however yeah. you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yes, I think the jovial aspect of it is that uh, he's listening to it and he's been trying to shut it out for a while and ignore it. And, and uh, at some point, um, Kovar kind of has to be like, okay, wait, but what is this? And starts paying attention to it um, and realizes that it's not like a mournful, separated from the pack kind of howl. It's mm -hmm. an excited on the hunt kind of howl. Um, 
and this makes it grow louder. Um, I think my question for you is, um, who usually communicates with us this way? Oh. All right, so this is great. Um, uh, all the curveballs. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to try I'm and now imagining um, our, our, our faithful hound that is like calling to us or something. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's. Let, um, let's say uh, the, I'm going to try and tie some things together here so we can get like, uh, cause we're going to start the third motif. I should look at some of these. Uh, For what it's worth, I added sliding on trash toboggans mm -hmm. as a riff off of no one's put a label on these bones, they're my bones, um, in the in the in the trash, in the trash theme. That like was, an echo there. Yeah. That was that my works. intent was to echo the yeah the, the, the trash. And I'm uh, figuring that the underworld uh return quandary is echoing back to gazing at whatever lurks beneath. Yes. Yeah. Cool. yeah, that was my exact hope. Yeah. yeah. That's so, great. Um, so I, I want to tie it back into this sorceress. So I think it's uh, uh, a sibling of the sorceress, right? Uh, the, and it's, there's no love lost between the two of them um, who has been maybe like a uh something of a patron to you all uh, mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm getting i'm getting a uh, angela lansbury vibe in my head here uh <laughs> this is this is willow right right now, going on but but like down. yeah but like all decked out in the like the sword and sorcery like you know, black with high collar, uh, with silver thing, sorceress type thing. Um, and like, you were supposed to have uh, uh, met up with her, you know, months ago and uh, haven't been able to find her. And now you can, um, right, because she has, uh, a pack of uh, strange dogs that at, at her command, uh, and uh, so yeah. Let, does that work? Is that a good? All right, I am gonna end this phase now because we got to do something. I don't know where we're going yet. Let's do a random yeah. side. Did that just change to exactly what it was? <laughs> cut, it, cut up. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think she's yeah. like Finn Rizal against Queen Bab Morda here, right? Yeah. Like this, <laughs> these rival sorcerers, sorceresses. All right, so I got a jovial overtone. Uh, I mean, we haven't done a perilous phase yet, but I'm not. Uh, I I don't think we're we're at one right now. Um, okay. Let's let's bring let's bring this this doggo in. Um, you you have slowly dri oh no you're jovial, uh, <laughs> or I'm jovial. Um, oh okay, this is the part of the underworld that's the heavy metal album cover part of the underworld, right? Like we've we've gone through uh, the contemplative, uh, um, calm still is the dead part of the underworld if we've now entered the part where uh, rivers of, of molten lava are uh, spreading out across uh, broken plains and you can hear uh, um, you can hear the dead 
I, I don't, they're not necessarily screaming. They're just loud because there's so many of them. There's been howling. Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, and I smile has melted away. Yeah. Just like are they, are uncomfortable they, visibly. Are they celebrating <laughs> the same celebration we were having on the overworld, on the overworld above? Um, yeah. Could, uh, I mean, like, it, yeah, sure. We have a nice mockery of it going on, right? Like yeah. tattered uh, tents and uh, the dead dancing. Uh, that I love that. Um, and in fact, I'm going to make that, it, that is going to be the thunder, that it just is a complete mock-up of what you saw above, uh, including like uh, a, a river of lava that is the, uh, the same shape as that encroaching shadow from the, the, the tower. Um, and just beyond them uh, is uh, the, oh, you know what? Okay, sorry, this is what happens. You've come to a stop, you come out of it, you see this before you. As you stand still, they're perfectly still. Every time you move, the, the, this dead party just livens up and does some things. And then when you stop, they stop dead. No pun there, but you know what I'm saying. And uh, just beyond them, because I'm staring at a, a mountain shaped like a wolf here, like there, there is this giant form of a dog on the other side of uh, that thing. We're doing a rogues phase. Uh, I'm going to hand the dice. I'm just going to mirror what we did last time. Uh, Gleek, show us how you entertain the dead while the rest of you <laughs> yes. uh, can get past them. <laughs> um, so they move when we move. And yeah. All right, let me roll these dice and see what happens. Oh, my overtone should be jovial here. I'll go fix that. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, no worries. All right, so it's glum. Uh, it's glum. Uh, maybe, maybe that's up to you. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. yeah, but you, you, you're in it. Mm -hmm. I'm in it. Um, yeah. I think, let me think about this for a second. So as we're moving through and maybe I'm going to say that in the um, in the world above, there was a little creek, like maybe four feet wide um, that inter like kind of like bordered one of the edges of the festival. And here there's a creek too, but it runs completely silently. And the water is like, it's not just black, it's black with no light and no shadow. It's just a deep, dark void um, that runs. And we're walking parallel to the embankment and, um, on the other side of the bank, we can see the dead dancing. Um, and among them, I recognize my grandfather. And just beyond him, I recognize other people um, who he's told me about, like family members who maybe died before I was born or family members who I know from childhood, but uh, you know, that's it. And they're, they're just, it's almost like there's a fog between him and them and they're behind him. And I know that if I, cross the creek if I actually wade into the water and let it soak me through I can step onto the other side of the embankment as one of the dead and I can stay there with the people who I love and who loved me and instead I just keep walking uh, with my friends and the knowledge of um, what I could have and what could be just sort of settles into my bones like a, a very cold night and that is going to be uh what that is and i am going to turn it yeah, and i just imagine that like as you stare at them of course you're still so they're still yeah and then as you start to move to like walk away from them that they like walk away from you as well like they pair oh. here they mirror your movement oh. and i think the closer i get any movement i make toward them they move away a little bit oh so Shoot, remind me, what, what is the thing that I do right now? I think I- <laughs> Oh, sorry, yeah, you make a demand of someone. So show us, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Um, so I'm going to turn it to Tide Falla and say, show us uh, what domain you have, if any, over the waters of the dead. 
Let us find that out. <laughs> All right. So the answer is a doomed, a doomed have the domain. Uh, I believe we get a mystery, right? Yeah. So you are. Uh, so we're now glum. We're now glum. Yeah. And uh, it's an escalation, and uh, you are thwarted from uh, having domain over the waters of the dead by yeah. some unknown or supernatural source, which should be pretty easy. Yeah, remind me again of what we saw in the distance. Tell tell me. Describe. Oh, it's the it's it's uh, like a mountainous version of this dog that you're looking for, right? Yeah. The the dog that is the uh, calling card of uh, the sorceress's sister, the Angela yeah. Lansbury character. Yeah, I don't. I'm so sorry for doing that. <laughs> I apologize. It's it's fantastic. <laughs> Angela Lansbury is cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, 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 nothing, nothing wrong with Rain and the Lansbury. So um, when when Gleek finally sort of like steps back from the water, uh, she sees that Tyfala has been biding her time and waiting because she did not want to interrupt Gleek's communion. But the moment, like it's clear that she doesn't want to step in, like uh, Tyfala. Um, like smiles at her, like, I'm glad we still have you. And then just looks very grave as she looks at the water and starts raising her hands and the water starts seeping up and it goes up and like, and Gleek's shoes get wet. And, and then it, 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 it sort of comes over and it gets underneath all of us. And it sort of like the water starts forming around to like lift us up and, and like carry us as if it was going to carry us over the, 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 uh, this 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 army of the dead, this army of dancing dead, and then just as it sort of got all of us in this sort of in this uh, a little unstable, but uh, but but it's holding us in the in this embrace. Uh, suddenly, it's like we didn't know it, but we were at the top of the um, we were at the top of the roller coaster that was click 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 thing up, and it was like slowly like raising us up, and then suddenly what. Tidefalla did not want it. <laughs> some other force takes out of the control, and we're all swept down this river. And it's you know we're 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 we're, we're flailing, and we're and we're, we're and we're and we're slashing, and we're pulled down this river. And uh, I think we watch uh, just to just to just to pull from some of, some of the rivers of the dead. We watch some of our memories of the past sort of float by us in in, in the water. Um, yeah. She almost had control, and then something wrested from her. So, sorry. Um. <laughs> so you get to write a mystery about that. Yeah. Uh, and you can also make a demand of someone else. Or we can end the phase there. At... Uh, um. Waters. All right. I actually um, think this is a good place to end this phase. Then yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I'm kind of quite curious about a perilous phase. So, all right, let's do a perilous phase. What am I going to do about a perilous phase? Well, it's going to be glum. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, your your roller coaster thing put in my head this like uh, this vision of like a, you know you're going you're being swept down. Uh, and uh, the the giant dog thing just kind of watches you go by, uh, and I'm trying to um, get there. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Let me hit you with the thunder with that. Um, I'm glum. So it watches you go by, and it goes to howl, and nothing comes out, uh, and this. You know, like this is the thing that's been communicating with you, drawing you down, uh, and uh, and you're being swept away so fast that, like, you know, like you j just see it for a brief moment, then you go under these uh, uh, waters and then come back up. Uh, but now I'm gonna have to give you uh, the storm, the thing that is happening right now. So all this 
grab you you had all four of you on this wave right oh, like yeah, sorry. that was your brilliant plan right that, that was our the... brilliant plan right i'm trying okay. to i'm trying to mirror what happened on top where the kid got stuck yeah uh, above the water was beached and we're all i think pulled under i think we we're like oh this is great under. yeah um just to i make like it even worse i like that imagery i think you get yeah, yeah you, you get pulled under uh and in the the sort of the chaos of it all um you can see it, you know it's that thing when you get underwater i don't know if this thing happens all the time you you don't know which way's up right like you yeah. like it, you get to this point where you're you're uh and maybe you can even see the t the like the actual uh top of the lake but it's below you you know uh that sort of thing so we're in a perilous phase i'm gonna hand the dice to one of you and then i'm just gonna make horrible things happen and when you want me to shut up you roll those dice uh i think kovar hasn't done anything in a while so let's do that um everyone's uh probably got a little breath in them they probably because you're all rogues who have been in adventure before you haven't been in this exact situation but i assume you're like oh we're going under let's just take a deep breath <laughs> like we'll deal with it once we're under um uh oh yeah and the sound is that underwater like everything is feels slower and everything sounds like bassier and and all of that uh and you're watching uh the, you know again this was not a big stream and uh it it overflowed his banks and then you went under and it just seems utterly vast where you are now and uh kovar uh I don't know why, but you look over to Tidefalla. Well, I know why. You're underwater. Why you would look to Tidefalla if there's the water situation or something yeah. like that. Uh, and the um, just above Tidefalla's head, there's a like a shiny, like light, like a little glowing light, like something to, to reach for, something to go for. Uh, mm -hmm. By the, uh, I should also point out, you're all allowed to slip and struggle. Mm -hmm. um <laughs> while this is happening as well uh and i mean personal nightmare of my own this is uh a giant angler fish jaws right like with the the or is it is it angler it's angler with yeah. the lantern yeah, yeah lantern. so like the first thing you see is that just like a like a star just above uh tidefall's head and then behind tidefall these giant teeth i'm gonna go yeah. Yes. So this is perfect. This is what this is exactly where I want to. I'm rolling the dice. <laughs> I've got double sixes. So it's it's jovial. So yeah. yes, it's, and you are oh. thwarted from doing what you were attempting to do. Nice. So let's figure out what that is. <laughs> okay, great. So um I uh I'm hoping to do I, I'm I'm uh I, I think it's a little bit irrational. It's a little bit mad, but I wanted to like grab hold of the little stalk that has the light at the end of it. Mm -hmm. Like I just have this this vision of like trying to throttle it that way somehow. So I think that's <laughs> that's what Kovar's trying to do is just like grasp onto this horrible light um, and and tear it apart or something. So I assume I am I am thwarted from doing that. Sure. So uh, you're allowed to say how you're thwarted, uh, or you can leave that to me. It's up to you. Um... Mess me up, dude. All right, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, this is, the, uh, I think the way you're thwarted is that uh, you grab at it and um, it's more interested in you now, right? Like, so, <laughs> so you grab at it and it just, it, it doesn't, it won't swallow you whole because that, that would, but it like, oh, it, uh, can, oh, all right, I'm gonna have these these horrible, agonizing, giant stalactite teeth come in, and they start tearing at the flesh. Uh, oh, we're yeah. we're jovial now. We're all jovial. We're yeah. So this is like the water is filling with. Uh, well, everyone's thrashing around, and uh, it's starting to fill with with blood. And mm -hmm. uh, oh, and you're holding on to the dice for however long you want, but you pass them off whenever you want. Uh, oh, nobody okay. can roll it until you yeah. pass. But, but we can all be, we should all right also right now be describing how we're slipping and struggling, yeah. right? Yeah, how are you slipping and struggling with this? Uh, I know for so a time, it, 
for just it's it's got uh Kovar in its jaws right now and it just barely missed uh Tide Fala. So you're right there at it. Uh yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to like clarify that. Go for it. Yeah. Um uh yeah, I think Tide Fala is slipping and struggling by um she lets out a curse to her mother, uh, who she feels has betrayed her um, for not, uh, uh, and doesn't think about it and takes this giant gulp of water in as she like yells and then breathes in. You can't hear what, tell what she's yelling, but it's, it's very much of like frustration and like anger. Um, and then we watch sort of her eyes go bloodshot. And as she, uh, as she, you know, deals with this, with this water that she, water that she's just taken in and, and suddenly kind of the severity of everything like this like hits her and, pan and she's panicked and she turns to this thrashing next to her and she's trying to pull open the jaws of this anglerfish to, to help Kovar out. But of course, like she's not like, doesn't have the physical might to do it, but she's like gripping on to these giant teeth and like trying to pull them apart. If anyone else wants to uh -oh. slip and struggle. I think I'm that- actually... um... Did everyone lock up? <laughs> Did we lock no. up? I, uh... Really quick, I think that just out of some hope to get some perspective on the situation more low keen, like uh like steps off of our mutual vessel and like oh. breaks the the Am surface. All like by myself. Um and as she does so, like she emerges, the cloak is like stained with blood, like it is a different color. <laughs> um and she sees that there are just more uh, stars everywhere, which means there are probably more fish. <laughs> and um, like, she's kind of like broken the surface, like, you know, like hanging off the side of the boat. I think uh, she pulls herself back up and like just shakes her head <laughs> at her cohorts. Awesome. Um... I was actually just about to pass the dice to you, Laqueen. Oh, okay. Um, but, but, but maybe actually I should uh, pass them to Gleek. I feel like we're having her from Gleek in a bit. Yeah. Oh, I, I've lost everything. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like everyone locked up. All I know is that uh, uh, Tidefalla is struggling to open the, the jaws there. Did I miss? You missed Laqueen's, yeah. Oh, what, what what was that? What uh Queen um like kind of stepped off the side of the the barge boat thing, um, the vessel, uh, and like hung off the side, breaking the surface of the lake underneath them, uh, to like take a peek at like what advantage can we get against this gigantic fish? Um, and like breaking the surface, seeing like her cloak is like dyed red with blood now. Um, like just like taking a moment to acclimate to everything. She sees like just stars everywhere in the water and sees that we are surrounded. Nice. <laughs> um, and yes, and I've just passed the dice to Gleek. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, whenever you want me to shut up, go ahead and roll those dice. Uh, <laughs> But I'm gonna make more, uh, more bad things happen. I, I love this that that uh, you're surrounded. Uh, yeah, like um, like fireflies, right? Like just floating. It's just so gentle and beautiful from a distance. Uh, the one that has Kovar is started to uh, do the. Uh, like threshing, you know, like the, like a shark would, like, you know, shaking back and forth, uh, tearing for their, maybe, I mean, how you doing there, Kovar? Are you? <laughs> Just getting chomped. Just getting chomped, um, yeah. Yeah, by an underworld fish. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm totally happy, by the way, if my character dies, um, uh, that's fine, um, or, or if it's an underworld fish that is merely doing a kind of soul damage to me, or you know what I mean? I'm yeah, down, yeah. I'm down with this. Yeah, I want to try something. So I'm actually Go gonna for roll the dice. Um, okay, and there's uh, the glum. Can I invoke? Was it the feet 
that allows me to summon vermin to yeah so i hope are getting devoured whether it's uh metaphysically or physically um by this gigantic creature and while while i usually use this on people there are all those other fish and there i imagine there's maybe some like kind of swarming insect in there around us there's things that i don't know the names of but i do know that um you know that they they are familiar to me they are swarms they're vermin they're pests they're things that people would find uh too numerous and hostile and so i um i talk to them i tell them that we are friends here and that one of my friends is in trouble and i would like their help and maybe just one at a time just first one kind of like shadowy mosquito-like thing lands on the creature devouring Kovar, then another, and then another. And it's the nature of swarms, right, to go from looking like individual creatures to suddenly these like masses of just existence and the fish start teeming out of the water and actually with their teeth start almost like, like using crampons on the side of the mountains, <sighs> latching up onto the front of the creature and then they all just start chewing in um until uh there's like little scraps of detritus but for the most part uh the creature is gone and kovar is no longer being devoured would you like to end the phase there <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. is the last thing left of the fish the jaws that were biting kovar yes I like think comes out <laughs> Yeah, like, and it's, you know, they're not bleached dry bone, they're still vascular and you can see the kind of blood vessels running through them still. So when um, maybe Gleek actually walks over and pries them open, because at this point all the insects and the uh, carnivorous fish have returned to the water. So when I go over to pry them open, some of those blood vessels split and just a little bit more blood uh, seeps out, but that's the end of that animal for sure. I, I'm going to throw that in as the last of the third motifs. The um, I, I'm just going to say the giant bones of a dead fish. Nice. I think we definitely echoed, I mean, the bones echo right there. So Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's the bones. Also do wanna... You can't, you can't, listen, you can take Gleek out of the bone zone, but you can't take the bone zone out of the <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you put a label on those bones. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> like those bones. bones. <laughs> I also just want to give a shout out to masses of existence. <laughs> As a phrase. It's yes. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so we're going into the end phase here. The end phase, uh, or not phase, but the end game. And in the end game, we're going to continue playing as we have been. But now when you narrate something, you can reincorporate something and uh, bring us that much closer to being done with the game. Uh, we have a lot of mysteries. The way to reincorporate mysteries is to either answer the mystery or to advance the question. Like say, oh, here's another thing we need to figure out about the mystery. Uh, and what you do is you just pick one of those mysteries and do that. We also have uh, motifs and the way you reincorporate motifs is a little strange. What you do is you take the, the suite of all three bullet points and you take two of those three bullet points and make something new out of it, right? So if we look at the first motif, we have shadow of the tower creeps closer and maybe no one puts a label on these bones and maybe you describe something that involves uh, a tower of bones or something like that. Uh, and like I said before, once three of the four of you reincorporate, we are done with the game. So let me go, I'm gonna go to a rogues phase. I'm leaning on these, but uh, I think this is a good time for it. Um, you've all, I think you, after all of this fighting, thrashing around in the water, uh, you've plunged through uh, and come out the other side, and now you're um, uh, 
you're in in the lake that that were the uh in the field again you've come out of the underworld and you're back in the lake where there was the the fair and in fact there is uh oh it's jovial um there's the fair but the people are busy tearing it down like not violently but actually just packing it up and 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 putting things away uh and people are running about doing things uh, as you just kind of come up out of the water and um the uh i feel like parts of this carcass comes up with you too right like it, it, this uh the thunder is that the uh whatever is there's something it's blood like or oily it's got like a sheen like a rainbow type sheen uh that's spreading out on the water where all the bits of this big fish have, have bobbed up with you as well uh that's the thunder we're gonna do a rogues phase uh i want to say you this is like a general din of I mean, you've all come up and there's the rush of uh, actually hearing out, you know, like you've gone through the water and you come out of the water and like suddenly all of the noise of the world around you kind of rushes in right away. Uh, but underneath all of that din, uh, I think Kovar, you can hear that single dog, the, the sound of that single dog uh, coming from the tower uh so uh show me how you uh scale the sorceress's tower well ooh, i've got glum yeah and so and so i've got just an absolute grim determination um uh just just bloodied hair matted um, uh, just kind of greased and grimed up from being like in like, like, you know, in like a really sort of mucky pond. That's mm -hmm. the vibe. Um, and I've got two of the teeth of that great big angler fish that I'm just kind of like, <laughs> and hoisting myself up on. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, and I, there's this weird vibe, like, Everybody else can come too. So figure yourself out, but I'm going up there. Um, yeah. Excellent. Uh, um, uh, let me pass it over. Um, Tidefala, how do you uh, make sure we're a little better prepared for this confrontation? Oh, yeah. Let's find out how I prepare us to face the sorceress, see if I can do it. Okay, did not. <laughs> no, it's glum, right? Yeah, 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 no, I'm just, I didn't get devils. I did, oh, I did, oh, I yeah, did yeah. fail. <laughs> um, Tidefalla, um, Tidefalla, like, uh, Tidefalla, um, uh, is very quiet for a while. It's almost as though she's not breathing. And at some point, instead of the moment where people come up from being drowned and they like cough up water and then they start breathing again, like Taifala hasn't done that yet. And when Kovar, uh, when Kovar gets us to the top, Taifala finally coughs up the water of the underworld that she brought in. Um, and it, it, she coughs it up and, uh, and we can see all of these, uh, we can see all of these mem all these haunted memories uh, that kind of that kind of flow by, and as as the water we're at the top of the tower, and so as the water sort of drips down, we hear the guards all like running in panic and fear of the 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 go the, the the specters of the underworld that she brought back up that that she brought back up with her inadvertently, and as we as we as we make our way down the inside of the tower, we see that you know people have. Uh, abandon their posts and our way to the sorceress is 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 clear. Um, yeah, and then and then she starts to breathe again. Um, are, you, are you reincorporating anything? I should make sure. Oh, that, uh, right, right. Um, you don't have to yeah. be. I'm just checking. 
I mean, I, I think I am answering the question of who commands the water of the damned, which is now me. It like it oh. wasn't before, but <laughs> it, it, after this transformation, it's now Typhala. Oh, um, nice. Um, so. she, um, and uh, Gleek, uh, show us how you find uh, the sorceress is very uh, wary of us and of the threats from within the tower. Uh, and she's hidden herself among the tower. Show us how you you get us to her secret chamber. Yeah, so are we like, so we're inside the tower, just in one of the antechambers there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kovar got us to the top and then we're kind of working our way down. Yeah. I feel like you were all using like the handholds made by these teeth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like there's these, there's these rip, these, yeah, these holes in the, yeah. You know, yeah um well roll first oh yeah that's right thank yeah. you for reminding me no no it's that's half my job is to remind <laughs> people to roll first oh, oh okay Ooh, right so we we were jovial right so we're gonna go glum and you're going to be thwarted from uh finding the um uh, the sorceress. Unless I use one of my feats, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You can use one of your feats. And I, I can use my jovial feat, actually. So I think, because um, I haven't used it yet, at, when we get up there, there is, um, I think Gleek has those those pockets, you know what I mean? Kind of like a toddler's pocket. Like If you turn them inside out, there would just be like sand and like oh. crackers <laughs> and just crap in there that you can't... Um, can't really identify something sticky uh and she out turns a pocket um and rummages through the stuff to find like one little crumb of something maybe it's like a walnut still half in its shell or something but she takes it out she starts breaking it up and as she breaks it up it's like those fairy tales where the more you split the bread the more bread there is until there's like a good handful of of food and she puts it on the stone floor in front of her and one by one like a rat shows up maybe a gull actually lands at the windowsill um and all of these creatures that go like noticed and unnoticed she starts asking them where have you seen doors where there are not doors where have uh. you seen shadows where nothing is casting them and one by one, each of them gives her, for each piece of food they take, a piece of information until there is basically a map. They're taking these little bits of walnuts and actually drawing out by placing them on the floor in front of us a straight path that we wouldn't otherwise see to the sorceress's um, chamber door. Nice. And awesome. Where to go. And I am going to pass dice to we haven't heard from the queen in a little while yeah so show us um show yeah, us I'm, I'm gonna help epi here for a second and ask are you reincorporating any oh, of yeah. the motifs oh. or answering Maybe. any of the mysteries or showing that they can't be answered let me or, see. Or... um i think I'm going to incorporate one of the second motifs, the queen laughing as the shadow serpent haunts the sorceress. Show us, Lo Queen, um, what your true intention of coming face to face with the sorceress is. What is it that you actually want from this? Okay, so. Roll first. He, I, I have a quick question before oh, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the map that is uh, rendered by this gathering of information that Gleek uh, curries, is it is it like a physical map or are you leaving it kind of undefined? Do we just have like a general idea of like where things are based on like you know, signposts? Yeah, that's a good question. And I take it back. It's not a map, it's a rune. It's a rune that we can actually carve into the air in front of us to reveal where the sorceress is truly that's what they're showing us. Yeah. Do you mind if I potentially riff off of that? Not at all, please. Cool. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Glum. Glumly. Cool. 
So, um, Laqueen removes her cloak and like lays it on the floor. Um, and underneath you can just see like a simple tunic um, and like a few different like straps where knives would have been now stuffed with like all of these different secrets and things. Um, and they're all blood stained because we've been swimming around in bloodied water. Um, <laughs> And she uh, looks around uh, at all of you and um, just simply asks, or demands really, knife. Does anyone have a knife? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like Among Us, uh, it, it seems reasonable. Kovar, you just do you have a raises blade? a fist. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Kovar's got a knife. Ko Kovar doesn't even look. You know, it's just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she she takes it, um, blade first, and squeezes. Um, and as her blood runs from the palm, um, she starts like running her hand across the surface of this cloak on the inside, which has also been bloodied. And in a stark white um, is this like knocked out shape of the rune. Um, and the rune eventually defines this, um, a clear map um, with all of these different star points of doorways. And the queen leans forward as one of those stars glows brightest um, and flickers with this anxiety. And she simply says, there she is, perched upon my throne. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, that's so good. She touches that, that star and in a flash is taken in, in this gout of smoke, essentially. <laughs> um, Kovar, show uh, us. Hold on a or, second. Are you reincorporating any of the motifs or answering any of those mysteries? Ooh, yes, actually. Um, so thank you, Sean. <laughs> I think mm. what stopped the incessant the, the dog's incessant barking. Mm -hmm. Um, is a fear of things being unseated, rights being wronged, someone pushing themselves into a position they shouldn't be, and that someone is Lakeen. Nice. Excellent. Uh, so, Kovar, um, show us how you realize, <laughs> or show us how you intend for, to stop both the sorceress and Lokeen from further Maleficence. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, two things. One second, I'm gonna review our motifs because I, I have a few oh, yeah. potential Go for ideas. It. Yeah, yeah. And um, to be clear, uh, 
Jabari, Laqueen just like disappeared in a puff of smoke, leaving the three yeah. of us all behind. Like we're, uh-huh. we're all oh. like, what the? Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <excellent>. Uh, yes. <laughs> So I'm I'm really stuck between wanting to allow them to destroy each other, like I have like having some certainty that they are just going to destroy each other, um, and wanting to do more of a Conan thing where I just like throw a chair at a sorcerer and <laughs> he dies. <laughs> yeah, and they both get knocked into a fire, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's frail. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think I think maybe we're all we're all about to like rush in like i'm like like kovar knows immediately like laqueen has has gone in like she she's gone in to to defeat the sorceress um but you have a map <laughs> yeah. yes and i'm and uh, um oh i didn't roll yeah oh <laughs> <gasps> Ooh. so three yeah normally this would be a moral but if you reincorporate it doesn't have to be a moral right so i think i think it is a moral also incidentally whether or not i write it out yeah yeah that's you're always allowed to do that yeah (laughs) (laughs) because i think um i i think laqueen is about to go in there to like gaze into the abyss um and to and you know she thinks she's on uh, in the real world and not the underworld um but i'm just i'm remembering being in the water and like rolling around and not knowing which way was up and like looking down and seeing what i thought of as the real world um and so i'm going to say kovar's like they will destroy each other and they will destroy this tower we we must flee Nice. And I'm and I'm gonna pass the dice off to Gleek. So did you reincorporate anything or I think so. I think I reincorporated the gazing at whatever lurks beneath the water. Okay, so uh yeah, I uh what we would have to do is synthesize something, but you've already got the tower falling apart as well, so it all works okay. together. I'm yeah, wondering, that's does the tower go down and through? I oh. feel like the tower might yes. exist <laughs> yes. on the up like it, and below, yes. and so like you can see all the way down to the underworld from. Yeah, I feel and like it just descends into its own shadow, like a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, we lost oh, no. Beyond. I'm uh, sorry. That was, I, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> um, so so this is uh, uh, um, three of the four of you have reincorporated which means that this is it. This is the end of the story, unless we feel we need an epilogue, in which case, Gian would just just roll the, the dice and narrate uh, a couple sentences in the tone of the dice. Uh, do we want to end with the, the three of you fleeing the tower and the tower just collapsing into its own shadow? Uh, yeah. Is that, yeah, I'm down yes. with that. That yes. seems like a, a yeah. marvelous ending. I think, Gian, if you have any specific details you want to add to that for the epilogue, it's cool, but right, I, yeah, I love it. Let's roll and just see what happens. Why not? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. what tone was it? What was the overtone last time? It was jovial, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that where we were? So this would be glum. Yeah, well, I feel like that's pretty fitting. Um, you know, I think here's the epilogue. Um, the three of us, we Kovar and Tidefalla, imagine like little vignettes that are moving through the seasons and they span like years and years and years. There's like three seconds of us huddled by a fire trying to take shelter as it rains uh, somewhere in the woods. And then like a season later, it's winter and we're like traveling on a snowy, almost ashen road. And then fast forward, it's us in the spring in a tavern but we're aging, right? Because time is is passing. And what we're doing is we're trying to outrun the shadow. Even though the tower is collapsed in its place, it left this great shadow. And on the throne of that shadow tower, we know our friend sits and is looking for us because she misses us and she's lonely. And I think that's the epilogue. Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. That is exquisite. Perfect. <laughs> like that. Oh. oh. 
That's so Fafner and Grey Mauser too. That's yeah. So just like, and they spent years singing. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, fantastic. Wow. Thank you all so much. Oh my wow. gosh. Thanks thank for running you. this. Yeah, that was awesome. Jabari, thank you for like calling it together. Yeah. Like, very awesome. Uh, yeah. To play with all of you. Uh, but wow, the imagery from this game is going to stick with me for a little while. It's beautiful. What a beautiful game and what a cool system to like inspire and like instigate that kind of imagery. It's very awesome. Really mm -hmm. into it. Thank you. There were so yeah. many moments where we were getting ahead of just like actually like rolling the dice because of the things that we were generating because <laughs> yeah. you're so excited about it. you're like oh yeah. sorry that bang there are people doing like setting off fireworks literally right outside my window and it's very <laughs> cool to watch not as cool to li yeah. <laughs> listen yeah yeah i'm around the block and i'm hearing it too it is loud it's very loud yeah oh wow uh that yeah what a great game. Thank you guys all. Like, thank you all so much. This was a wonderful way to spend a Friday evening. Yeah. 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 And thank you, chat, for hanging out with us. Tomes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Loving your, your commentary. Kovar is the Conan I always wanted. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a blast. Um, I am Sean Nittner. I use he, him pronouns. You can find River at Sean Nittner. And uh, I will be streaming more here. Um, going to be playing some Burning Wheel and some Scum and Villainy, and uh, um, maybe another game as well, starting up soon too. So lots, lots of lots of games on actual play for me coming up. And um, yeah, very excited about it. This game was a blast. I'm so glad we did it, and uh, looking forward to more fun stuff. How about, how about you, Alex? Uh, my name is Alex Roberts. You can find me most places at Hello Alex Roberts. Um, or HelloAlexRoberts.com. Um, I have a couple of games out for the Queen and Starcrossed, uh, but I just recently put out a two-player game that you can play over long distance um, called Our Time on Earth. So if you want to check that out, go find it on Itch. I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, thank you, thank you all so much for having me. Um, pass it off to Gian. Hi, I'm Gian Shim. Um, uh, I'm a game designer. Most of my games are available either through my Patreon, which is just the handles Gian Shim, um, or on my itch. But uh, I actually do have a specific project coming up, which is on July 7th, 7-7, uh, I and Kevin Culp, who um, is one of the co-authors of Swords of the Serpentine, are writing a game called Wait For Me, which is a game about um, time traveling. <laughs> Sorry, that was a big one. Yeah, wow. it was right there. It's very shiny. Love a flash too. Very cool. Sorry. Um, so as I was saying, we are writing a one or two player game called Wait For Me, which is about time traveling through your own personal history. And it's a journaling game. If you play it solo or an epistolary game, like a game where you exchange messages, um, if you play it with two players. the I'll put the hashtag up in chat. It's a Wait For Me RPG. And we're talking about it on Twitter a bunch. And it's kickstarting on July 7th, and we're really, really excited about it. Um, I will pass it off to Jabari. Thanks, Gian. I'm also super excited for the game. So, yeah, uh, same. Uh, hi, I'm Jabari Weathers. Uh, once again, I'm an illustrator for many indie RPGs. Also, maybe releasing some design stuff later on this year. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Goblin Princess. Um, which I'll drop in the chat momentarily. Um, and you can also find my work at jmwillustration.com. Uh, this was really wonderful. Uh, Epidiah, I'll pass it off to you. Hi, uh, I'm Epidiah. You can find me on Twitter at, at Epidiah. Uh, normally this would be where I try and sell you on this game, but um, a little over 800,000 of you have this game because it was part of that itch bundle. So I'm not, just download it, I guess, if you want. Uh, and I'll sell you on the one behind me here, Wolf Spell, which is my uh, game about turning into wolves uh, that I printed on a trifold uh, album cover. So this is, I don't know if that's all getting in there or not. Uh, majestic. You can find that at worldswithoutmaster.com. Um, illustrated by Shell Khan. Uh, 
I'll hand this over to Sean. Yeah, um, I am just going to say good night to all of you. Uh, this was so lovely. And um, the, if you missed any of it, the bottle will be up in a day or two. And uh, anyway, good night all. <laughs>